David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 3303 solids. Reviewing exam number four and talking about a column buckling critical loads problem. Uh, here is uh, my drawing of it. Not very good drawing, but kind of shows the points. I've got a column and it's fixed at the base and the top it's got beams framing in that pin it that prevent displacement in the X and the Y direction but they don't prevent rotation so it's considered a pin connection at mid span of the six meter height I've got a beam framing in in the Y X direction which is this direction which prevents displacement in the X direction but nothing in the y direction to prevent displacement in the y direction. We'll talk about what that means here in a second. <clears throat> so that's what was stated in the given for the cop for the problem. I was also given that IX, the moment of inertia about the x-axis is 12.5, 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. IY is this. E is 200 gigapascals. Remember a gigapascal is a billion it's 200 times 10 to the ninth newtons per meter squared. I convert everything to millimeters squared, so it's really 200,000 megapascals. A megapascal is newton per millimeter squared. That's 200 times 10 to the third megapascals or newtons per millimeter squared. Okay, the find was to find the critical buckling load in each direction. Okay, you've got to realize that for a, any shape, you have a moment of inertia about the x-axis and the y-axis. <clears throat> and the length of it, of the column, in each direction, that's why you have bracing, to reduce the overall length of the column. And so, this is a pretty typical case, because the y-axis is so much weaker it tends to buckle about that y-axis, so you brace against deflection in the x-direction, which is helping the y-axis bending, and you can uh, increase your uh, allowable critical buckling load. Okay, so the first case we're looking at is buckling in the x-direction. Buckling in the X direction means bending about the Y axis. So if this is the looking at the shape from the top, if I'm buckling in this X direction means I'm bending about the Y axis. Buckling means bending. So for buckling in the X direction, I want to use IY, this number up here. For buckling in the X direction, I have, as I noted just previously, two end conditions because I have two spans. I have this top three meter span and the bottom three meter span or length. The top is pinned pinned so K is equal to 1.0 that ends up controlling. The bottom is fixed pinned so its K is 0.7. The bigger K produces a bigger number on the bottom of this equation and so that's what controls because I want to get the smallest from the smaller of the two end conditions and the smaller P critical. So remember the formula I'm going to use it was given to you on the equation sheets pi squared EI over KL squared. So now I've established which I I want to use, IY, and I've established what K is 1 and L is 3 meters. Now I just need to get all my units correct. I got pi squared 200 th times 10 to the third, 200,000 newtons per millimeter squared, from which is E, expressed in 200,000 megapascals, or 200 gigapascals. I is just, IY is just as 3.2, 10 to the sixth, divided by 1 for K, 3,000, I've converted the length in meters to millimeters, and then I square that. So I've got newtons per millimeter squared, times millimeters to the fourth divided by millimeters squared comes up with 701,840 newtons 
which is equal to 702 kilonewtons. So that's part of the that's one part of the problem. The other one was to figure buckling in the y direction, which means bending about the x axis. If I've got here's my shape and I'm bending in the buckling or bending in the y direction, that means going like that, it's bending that direction. That means it's bending about the x axis, so I want to use ix up there. The length for bending or buckling in the y direction, there's nothing to restrain it here at this midpoint like there was for the x. So the length is 6 meters. And the end conditions are fixed at the base, pinned at the top. So for that, k is equal to 0.7. I know all my variables, so I just run the calculations. Pi squared ei over k l squared. There's these, you see the numbers, so the answer is almost 1.4 million or newtons or 1399 kilonewtons. Some people were expressing it in, I saw a couple answers in meganewtons, which is a million newtons. Even saw some answers in giganewtons, which were kind of unusual. Anyway, that's the answer. Critical po the key points are buckling means bending, bending in the x direction, buckling in the, or bending in the x direction means bending about the y axis. Conversely, bending in the buckling in the y direction means bending about the x axis.